Okay, similar polygon, 7.2. Um, two new words that we've got, similar polygons and scale factor. The scale factor is the one that we're going to concentrate on later on in this exercise. Um, difference between similar and congruent. Congruent means it has to be the same size um, in lengths and angles, whereas um, a similar polygon keeps the angles but it's like when you photocopy if you enlarge or reduce a photocopy the angles stay the same size but the sides do change and that's similar okay so here's here's example one and the concept of it uh, similar polygons as you can see by the drawing a b c d and w x y and z um, the, all the angles stay in the same size, in this case in the same position, just the sides of the uh, shapes change um, and as you can see um, corresponding angles they are all congruent um, but what changes is the size. Okay, You need to pick from whatever the diagram is asking or the question is asking you which of the, so which of the polygons goes on the top, the numerator part of the fraction which of the polygons it becomes the denominator okay uh, most times it's the smallest to the biggest so as you can see you'll finish up with three to one which means that a polygon a b c d is three times bigger than w x y and z okay now one thing i like about example one it's reiterating uh, what needs to go with what the first letter must go with the first letter the second with the second etc etc okay um, and then put your proportion and if you look um, it's the same side on the triangle but be careful because as you look in example one what they've done is they've uh, not only have they rotated it they flipped it as well so be careful that you make sure that you've got the right side in this case FG and the corresponding side with um, the other triangle in this case JK. So make sure you've got it the, the right side to go with the right side in order to put your um, fraction together. Okay, so here's question number one and question number two. Um, first of all, make sure you read what you've got. So ABC is ZYX. So if I'm looking at angle A, then that must be congruent to the corresponding angle with that, which is angle Z. Okay. Um, and obviously you've got all the other three angles, the other two angles as well. Um, if I look at side, if I look at AB, which is the first two letters of the left-hand triangle, it must be the first two letters on the right triangle, so that's ZY. And again, for these types of questions, three, well, in, in this question, three angles, three sides. Okay, so let's go and have a look at question number three. Um, you've got to determine whether each pair of figures is similar. Okay, and if it is, you've got to write the scale factor. If not, what's the reasoning? Well, the simple factor is, if you put it in scale factor um, and simplify your fractions then, if they are the same, they are similar. If they're not the same, they're not. So let's start with the smaller sides. So in question number three, you've got four over nine. Um, can you simplify that? No. So there's the scale factor for the smallest side. What about the biggest side? Does that equal, and I'm putting a question mark there, does that equal 10 over 18? Well, if we simplify 10 over 18, that will give you 5 over 9, not 4 over 9. Okay, so in this case, they do not equal, so the answer is no. Okay, so let's have a look at example three, and this is what I was talking about earlier on. Okay, so part A says find X. First thing you've got to make sure is that you rotate them, or in this case, flip them so they're the right way around. In fact, this is a rotate and a flip. Okay, you have got, for part B, you have got an expression, um, and here's the variable that we want for this one. Um, so make sure you've got corresponding parts or similar parts I should say well as you can see here what they've done is they've started with the bigger one on the top which is the uh, the numerator and the smaller one which is the den the denominator you must carry on with that same process once you've got okay so obviously 
the next part is to find the two other sides that are supposed to be similar and that's what you've got to find out and in this case the bigger one on the top which is the x part the smaller one on the bottom which is the 10 you've got a cross uh, multiplier again and then you can solve okay so it's just basic algebra but again be careful especially when you get the part b where you've got 3y minus 1 which is an expression but the principle is still the same you're still cross multiplying okay um, obviously you've got an extra step so just be careful of the extra step but solving it should be no diff difficult than you have been doing with regular algebra let's have a look at question number five all right same principle as we just done so let's have a look if we go for corresponding sides well let's have a look all the angles so c is the s and d t and f and v and h and w so it's the same way around and it doesn't matter which one you pick whether it's the smaller one or the bigger one i take the smaller one so i'm going to put three over its corresponding side which is x and that must equal the two parts the two sides that we do know which is four over eight Okay, cross multiply, so we get 4x equals 24, um, divide through by 4x equals 6. Boom, finished. Okay, so here's, here's example number 4, um, and on the, on the face of it, it doesn't look as if you've got enough information, especially on the smaller one, um, P, Q, R, S, and T, but you have, and you'll see in a minute. Okay, um, so let's have a look at the notations. AB is 8, and that's congruent to BC, so you know that that must be 8. CD is 4, and that's congruent to AB, so you know that's 4. Okay, so uh, if I'm starting to find a perimeter first, it's easy to find a perimeter, add them all together, I get 30. Okay, still need the scale factor. Um, even though we haven't got dimension, well, now, now you've seen me put the 4 over here between AE, well, that corresponds with RS, so you know it's 4 over 3. Neither of those could be simplified, so the scale factor of the bigger one to the smaller one is 4 over 3. Okay, let's find the perimeter of the smaller one. The 4 over 3 still comes into play again. What do we know about the bigger one? It's got a perimeter of 30. So once we've found X, we've found the perimeter. So we do exactly the same as we have been doing, cross multiplying and dividing, and you finish up with 22.5 for X, and that is the perimeter. So now you've found both perimeters and the scale factor. Okay, so question number seven. Um, looks daunting to start off with, because as you can see, um, it's a blueprint, which is obviously scaled down. Um, as you can see, it's 1 inch to 1.75 inches, but the actual length of the balcony is 7 feet. So be careful, because you've got feet and you've got inches. We'll come back to that in a minute. What is the perimeter of the balcony? Well, straight away, you already know what the length is. It's 7 feet. Well, you've got the back and the front of the balcony, so you've got 2 times... 2 times 7 will give you 14 feet. So we've already got part of it. Now we've got to find the rest. Okay, so what proportion do we do? Well, what we're after in theory is you know that the 7 feet is the connection to the 1.75. What we don't know is what the inch, the width represents. So make sure you put it in the right format. Okay, so the only fraction that we can make out of here is the inches so I'm going to put 1 over 1.75 okay but because we've started in inches we need to continue in inches okay so what we've got to do is change the 7 feet into inches there are 12 feet in in a foot so we need an 84 okay uh, what's the missing part well the missing part is the width so we need to put x on the top and the 84 on the bottom Cross multiply, so you've got 1.75x will equal 84, and if you divide by uh, 84 by 1.75, you actually finish up with x equals 48. We're still talking inches at the moment, okay? Um, and we do know there are 12 inches in a foot, so that must equal 4 feet, okay? Um, and again, you've got um, two sides of it so we need to do two times um, four which will give us eight feet so we've now got the width of the balcony is eight feet and if you add both of those together we finish up with a total perimeter of 22 feet 
Okay, so be careful questions like this where you've got two different units. Make sure you simplify it into one unit. Either change one inch and 1.75 inches into feet or change the feet into inches. But again, make sure.